She really taught me how to live and how to love in a way that I didn't really know before. We had a whole weekend planned of activities and making our way back towards the marina and something went terribly wrong. There was a huge crash and everything went blank. Jennifer was thrown forward and crashed through the cabin door down to the lower galley. And I spent the night in the hospital myself, so I was unaware of what was really going on until the next day. That's when I learned she had a lot of continued complications with her breathing. We had gotten Jennifer to the place where she was now able to speak. She was able to write. And she wrote in big letters that we're going to make it. And at that point, I had every reason to believe that that was true. We were so excited because Monday morning she was scheduled for a barium swallow test. And that was the last big hurdle. With a green light on a barium swallow test, she was going to go home. I since have become very familiar with a term called TEF, which is a tracheal esophageal fiscula, which is basically a hole that establishes itself between the trach and the esophagus. The barium went down her esophagus and then was quickly seen to migrate into her trach and then quickly spread into her lungs. They were blowing her full of air for six hours. Instead of it going into her lungs, it went into her belly. They told me that Jennifer was in cardiac arrest for over 14 minutes. She was so oxygen deprived that everything just shut down. How is it possible that on Monday morning you have a definitive diagnosis of a TEF, but Tuesday afternoon she's back on a positive pressure ventilator with no isolation and no protection from that hole that they had just discovered? I've since learned a lot about electronic medical records and something that the industry talks about, which is the problem list. The problem list is a idea where you take all of this aggregate information and the computer systems try to organize it. The most problematic condition is sort of forced rank to the top and then everything sort of in descending order follows thereafter. It's tricky, but it's where electronic medical records have to go. Because no human can possibly absorb as they're coming onto a shift or as they're assigned a respiratory case like Jennifer's. I have 4,661 pages of her medical record. One page, one paragraph. It talks about the TEF. So what did the caregivers know at the most critical time? I don't know. They clearly didn't know she had a TEF. We all go into those environments with a false sense of safety. The truth is, there's so many moving parts. There's so much information. It's not well organized. It's not well communicated. It's not well coordinated. I don't believe for a minute that Jennifer's caregivers were intending to do any harm to her. It's just a case of they didn't know.